serious situation. As a local TV reporter, I was in Lansing. I covered Michigan State for 10 years. I actually had a, a brief interaction with Larry Nassar. I had to get information about a gymnastics story that I was doing. And so I'm well aware of his reputation. Everyone had said, go to Larry Nassar for this. Go to Larry Nassar for this. Highly respected reputation. So I read these stories about him. I, you know, I'm checking it off. Yes, 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 and yes. What I have learned is reputation does not always equate to integrity. Mm -hmm. Reputation does not always equate to right, choice, right choices or right behavior. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter if one person is coming to you with an accusation. If it is a sexual abuse or sexual harassment accusation, we need to pay attention to that. Not mm -hmm. only if it's just one person or a hundred people. Right. Right. Yeah, and I, I saw the experience too as a local reporter when I was in North Carolina. I was covering the, um, the Greg Hardy situation too, um, and the woman in that in that particular situation in um, domestic assault, she didn't want her name to be out there. You really didn't hear her name. She she kind of wanted to not be the spotlight. She didn't really want to do media about it. I mean, it's a very sensitive, tough situation. But then on the flip side, I see Brianna Stewart, and we all read that piece she did last year in the Players' Tribune. It was really powerful, talking about um, you know the sexual assault that she had faced um, as a young woman, and it was so powerful in the fa fact that people are they're standing up for themselves and they're not afraid to do that anymore. And I think that's a big moment right now that we have where women are finally being able to speak up, and they instead of being seen as or perceived as difficult when they stand up to defend themselves, but I do still see in the sports world that maybe it's not happening as much. So I'm wondering if the Nassar case is kind of the breakthrough moment and with Me Too, the Me Too movement too, if that's the breakthrough moment right it's, now. It's okay to have a face because mm -hmm. the face can represent strength. Mm -hmm. and, and I like the word Vera, you and I were talking about, it, instead of using the word victim, yeah. use the word survivor. Sure. Mm -hmm. It has a much more powerful message yeah. behind it. It is. And and with sports, we're always thinking we're supposed to be strong, it's going to be tough. This would never happen in sports. And so I think it's very eye-opening. Um, and we're supposed to be empowered. Um, but it you can't be empowered when you're talking about sexual harassment, um, assault, abuse of any kind. Um, you can't be. And, and there's such a a backlash that comes with being a survivor or a victim, so to speak, that when you decide that you want to finally speak out, you want to you, you want to just face the reality, even tough women in sports, strong women in sports still struggle with it because of the fact there are repercussions that come administratively. Um, and you are if it's a coach, if it's an, uh, uh, an administrator of some sort. Um, and if it's another player, I mean, in your community, you don't want to be ostracized. And so there are women, plenty of them, I think, that are still holding on to it. Um, and we've seen in the entertainment world, the Bill Cosby's, the Harvey Weinstein's, we've even seen the political world, the accusations against Donald Trump. And everybody goes, oh, no, she's a liar. And all 20 of them, all 100 of them, you know, and after a while, you do feel like the victim. And I think there's still a reason why many women in sport do not speak up. So maybe this is changing. The tide might be changing. Kudos to those women who have stepped forward. Yeah, and to go to how I, I was introducing this segment, it shouldn't be the number of accusations yeah. that makes you pay attention. Yep. It should just be the accusation. Yeah. And in how many times now or how many athletic administrations now are going to look at this example mm -hmm. and maybe change the way they monitor not just football and men's basketball, where there's a ton of eyes on some of those sports, but some of the Olympic sports now, like right. gymnastics, softball, track and field, which uh, which was some of the problems here with this case. Yeah. Yeah, and I just think it's powerful, like you guys said, giving these survivors a voice and just applauding everyone that's speaking out. I mean, it's it's hard to watch these things. Like when you watch Ali Raisman's video, it's hard to watch that and not get emotional. Mm -hmm. um, so I just applaud these people for the strength they're showing throughout all of this. And moving forward, I'm looking at leadership. How does mm -hmm. this affect the administrators? Um, how how are, are you going to address these issues? Are you going to dismiss it as locker room talk? Or like Lisa said, are you going to be able to say, hey, one time is enough, let's investigate. Let's be sure that you know nothing inappropriate is happening here. And also, are you going to um, set the stage to provide the assistance necessary for the victims, for the survivors? go above and beyond, be proactive, go above and beyond, and actually empathically care about what's happening. Because I will say, unlike you two, um, I have seen it in athletics, um, and it is very difficult 
to deal with. Yeah. Very difficult. Very serious situation, but hopefully there are some positives we can move ahead to here in the future in, in, in all areas.